Shock and disbelief as Bill Cosby is freed from jail on a technicality. College athletes can start making money off their names today. And a reversal of the Olympics. Nursing moms can now bring their babies to Tokyo. Thursday Need to Know, let's go. Good morning, this is Cheddar's Need to Know podcast. For Thursday, July 1st, I am Jill Wagner with Carlo Versano. Uh, July already, Carlo. 2021 is already half over, if you can believe that. Pretty crazy, right? Uh, but uh, are you enjoying our, su- our new subtropical climate <laughs> here in the Northeast? It's nice, right? So I'm not in New York City anymore. I, I obviously work in New York City, but did you get the alert basically asking yeah. people not to, to use a lot of power? I did, and I didn't do anything about it. I That's, guess I should have. <laughs> so I thought to myself, if I got that alert, what would I do? Because they're asking people not to run the, la- the dishwashers and, and these high yeah. energy things. I guess for the good of people, you, for the greater good, you should probably not do it. But I don't know if anybody actually cares, which is I terrible. Mean, I'm hanging because, on. By the yeah. way, as somebody who was stuck in an elevator during a blackout, uh, yes. I think it was like 15 years ago, I could tell you they're not fun. Um, I just... I, uh, I, my all of my high energy appliances are running on overdrive now because nobody told me that when you have a baby, your dishwasher never stops and the laundry <laughs> never stops. I went from doing laundry once a week to we're doing like two or three loads a day now. Yes. Um, it's crazy. Well, remember I said that the weirdest thing about about when you have a baby, you I, for me anyway, I became a lot more conscious, conscious about the environment and wanting to leave yeah. a better world for my daughter. At the same time, you are also so about convenience and yeah. and like you throw out diapers and you you run right. all of your appliances. It's it's like this weird thing where you care more, but you're actually causing more. It's problems. survival mode. Yes, it's survival mode over here. All right, Carl, let's get to the big story, at least from yesterday. Bill Cosby waking up a free man this morning after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned his conviction on charges of sexual assault. Um, so I want to explain as clearly as I can what happened here, because it's it, yeah. it's a technicality, as we said at the top. Um, this decision not really expected, but the court ruled that Bill Cosby was denied his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Um, and that's because an earlier prosecutor had promised that Co- that he would not bring criminal charges against Cosby if Cosby testified in a civil case that was brought against Andrea Constant. OK, so that agreement apparently never put into writing. But back in 2005, Cosby did agree to testify and he did testify and he incriminated himself in that civil suit. Um, but he only agreed to testify because there was that promise that there would be no criminal charges right. against him. So fast right. forward to just a few years ago, there is a new district attorney in place who says that they're not going to be bound by the promise of the former DA. As we know, that new DA did bring criminal charges against Cosby. He was found guilty of drugging and assaulting Andrea Constant back in 2004. And he had been serving three years of a three to ten year sentence. Uh, When yesterday, again, a total surprise, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court essentially said that Cosby's rights had been violated and they threw out the case. Uh, The 83 year old comic freed immediately and he flashed this V for victory sign as he left prison. Constant, one of 60 women who had publicly accused uh, Bill Cosby of rape or sexual misconduct over the uh, the last uh, decades. His conviction among the first in the wake of the Me Too movement, if you remember, um, really, like you said, a surprising development here, basically freeing him on this legal technicality. Maybe this is obvious, but I think worth repeating. He was not exonerated, right? He's still a convicted rapist, uh, but shocking nonetheless, Jill. I mean, shocking. I I was driving home, actually, from work when this news came out, and I was like, wait, what? Um, And and the reaction, almost unanimously that, right? Shock and disbelief. But a few notable exceptions. Felicia Rashad, who played Cosby's wife on The Cosby Show, she came out calling it a, quote, terrible wrong being righted. She was certainly, though, in the minority. A lot of women, especially on social media, saying this is just evidence of our two legal systems in action, one for the rich and famous, one for everybody else, especially when it comes to sexual assault cases. Uh, The big concern here is that, though, it it could dissuade some women from coming forward and and pressing charges against Right. Right. Because why would you if you if it's if the whole if the the high court is just going to say, you know, no. 
right? So Why go technically, it? interestingly enough, so I, I was trying to figure out what this means for Cosby and if he could be tried again. So technically, if there are a different woman, could if, if there are new charges against him, it's not like he's exonerated for life from everything he's ever done. The problem is that the statute of limitations, there's at this point, like, I think it's 10 years in most jurisdictions. Yep. So, the, you know, the window is closing in a lot of ways for, for women to come forward against him. So most experts say it's likely that he's just going to kind of live out the rest of his life, um, not behind yeah. bars, but I, I guess we'll see. Yeah, and he's not in good health. He is 83 years old. I suspect he will probably uh, die at his home in Philadelphia. Um, but I, I think that's a very good point, what you just said about how it's going to dissuade other people from coming forward because, I mean, it, the, the amount of heartache and stress it would put you under to to be a um, – you know, involved in a case like this, a high profile case like this, and then just have it tossed on a technicality. It's awful. Uh, switching gears, President Biden is going to be visiting the rescue operation underway in Surfside, Florida today. Crews um, pulled the bodies of two children from the rubble, the young daughters of Marcus Guara, who we mentioned yesterday. Uh, the death toll now stands at 18, with 145 people still missing. Reinforcements from across the country are coming in to help relieve some of the first responders who have been working nonstop for the last week, and at least one of whom has been hospitalized uh, with exhaustion. So they're basically doing these 12-hour these shifts, um, and, and it's a lot. Yeah, it's like the bucket brigade, right? Like there's there's only so much you can do on this pile of concrete because you don't want it. You can't even really bring in the heavy machinery because it risks, you know, collapsing. What's this sort of like delicate balance where people could theoretically still be under that rubble? Now it has been a week since this happened, uh, so I think this is going to quickly turn from a rescue to recovery mission. Uh, it's just awful. A uh, one thing I wanted to note: a woman swimming in her pool across the street from this condo uh, last week. She actually took a TikTok video that just came out moments before the Champlain Tower South building collapsed. It sh the video is incredible. It shows water pouring from the roof of the parking garage and debris falling on the ground, basically the building in the early stages of collapse. Uh, it's an incredible video. It's very hard to watch because um, you, you realize that none of the people above had any idea was a, that was what was about to happen. Um, now, I feel almost crass saying this, but I, I do think that it's it, it's just important. Keep an eye on Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida today, and whether he's going to join uh, President Biden as he tours um, the site of this disaster. Now, in the old days, this would have been a no-brainer, right? You put politics aside when it comes to a national disaster like this. That that's not necessarily true anymore. I don't know if you remember, Jill, but Chris Christie, um, back when Hurricane Sandy happened here in 2012, uh, there was that famous photo of him hugging President Obama on the tarmac as Obama came to survey the damage. And if you look at the polling of Republican primary voters in Iowa in 2016, when Christie was among the front runners for the Republican nomination, that was one of the things that did him in. It was none of the George Washington Bridge stuff that we really? in the media thought – People hated that he had embraced Obama. Um, now, DeSantis is positioning himself as sort of like the heir to Trumpism. He's a very savvy politician. Um, I suspect that he will meet with Biden today, uh, but it'll be interesting to see to what extent they sort of, uh, you know, were, uh, we see them together. That's really fascinating because I would think that voters would like a little uh, would well, like the coming together of politicians, putting aside differences in in the face of a, a national tragedy. The, but Jill, it's the exact point that you made yesterday, right? Primary voters are a different are a different thing, right? Yeah. Voters in a general election, I, I think absolutely. But when you're trying to court primary voters, you can't be seen anymore as even remotely being like on the side of the opposition. Um, on that note, the House is going to form a select committee to investigate the January 6th Capitol riot after voting nearly along party lines to establish the slim down panel, which will be controlled by Democrats. House Republicans will have a say in choosing five of the 13 members in consultation with Speaker Pelosi. She's reportedly considering picking a Republican like uh, Representative Liz Cheney to fill one of the other eight slots. Cheney will remember one of just two Republicans who voted for this committee after earlier attempts to create a bipartisan commission were blocked in the Senate. 
Uh, an incredible, speaking of just incredible video, uh, the New York Times put out a 40 minute visual investigation of that day. It's a really amazing piece of journalism. If you have the time to watch it, I highly recommend it. I haven't even finished it yet, but the takeaways are basically, they, they, they put it, they comb together through all of the video from that event uh, on social media and just the news uh, video. Um, and what they found was there were multiple breach points, as many as eight at the Capitol, which was more than we thought, right? It's not just that people broke into that building in one or two places. It was happening simultaneously at these places on both sides of the building, uh, just showing the police were vastly outnumbered, which I guess we already sort of knew, right? Uh, another takeaway is just that the rioters were really largely disorganized. Uh, they weren't, uh, most of them weren't members of any of these far right groups, but they were being cheered on um, by some of those more organized groups like the Proud Boys, sort of, the, they were sort of like, you know, telling them, go for it, go for it, you know, break in, break in. Uh, the videos also show just the crowd reacting to specific parts of Donald Trump's speech uh, as he was speaking uh, in front of the White House that day, believing that he was explicitly sending them to the Capitol, and some of these people um, believing that he was right behind them, that he was actually coming with them uh, to storm the building. It, really amazing stuff. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, the consequential defense secretary to two presidents, has died. Rumsfeld ran the Pentagon in the Ford administration, um, and then he came back to the job under President George W. Bush, where he oversaw the war on terror and the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq before he was pushed out by Bush in 2006. At that point, the situation in Iraq was deteriorating significantly. Rumsfeld was 88 years old. His family says the cause was multiple myeloma. Hard to overstate if you're um, of the younger vintage listening to this, uh, just how influential Donald Rumsfeld was in the Bush years, uh, especially in the early Bush years. He was the architect of basically everything that we were doing in the Middle East after 9-11. He was initially quite popular, actually, in those in those weird days after 9-11, uh, when Bush had, I think, a 92 percent approval rating. Um, but remember, I sort of remembered his pugnacious press conferences during the Iraq invasion. Uh, he had some very famous lines, including one that would come back to haunt him and that administration, quote, you go to war with the army you have. Um, his reputation became tarnished as the situation in Iraq got worse over the years. Um, he also signed uh, the infamous torture memos, which uh, I consider at least to be one of the great betrayals of American values in our history. Uh, a couple of interesting things. He was the he was the youngest defense secretary under Ford and then the oldest defense secretary yeah, right. under George W. Bush. Um, Andrea Mitchell from NBC did a great report on him. So she says he was talking about invading Iraq and Saddam Hussein just four days after the attacks on 9-11, even though mm -hmm. there was no real evidence that Iraq had anything to do with those attacks and that Saddam Hussein had no real ties to Osama bin Laden. Um, yeah. As we mentioned, his legacy largely tarnished, but he insisted, he wrote uh, a memoir a few years ago, and he insisted that he never lied about Saddam Hussein having weapons of mass destruction, and he said instead, quote, the far less dramatic truth is that we were wrong. History will be the judge of that. Um, on to some business news, that free ride you may have been enjoying with Apple TV Plus coming to an end, or at least it's being shortened. So as of today, customers who buy new Apple devices will only get three months of the streaming service thrown in instead of uh, the year that had been the norm. Also this month, the first people to activate that promotional offer when it started back in September of 2019 will start getting billed five bucks a month for the service. That promotional offer was extended twice during COVID, but now coming to an end. Do you, pay, you don't pay for this, do you? Apple TV Plus? I, think I don't I'm know. On a this is one offer. of the ones that falls under my husband's account. Um, <laughs> I'm like we we like I told you we we have different streaming yeah. services that we pay for. Yeah. Um, Apple, it's 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 all him. So I don't believe so, but I, I guess we will be starting today. Well, well, you would be in the minority uh, because nearly two thirds of Apple TV Plus subscribers are getting the service for free through the promotion. That's according to a recent industry uh, survey. So that this is a really big test for Apple, right? Do folks stick around with this streaming platform when they start getting billed for it? I don't know. I, do people even notice some of these recurring charges? Sometimes I'll look on my credit card bill and I'll be like, "What five dollars? What is this five dollars? I don't even know <laughs> what this is anymore." Um, uh, I have yeah. to say though, a Apple is. I know that you're a fan of Apple, um, Apple TV Plus, and I have to say it's growing on me. I'd probably put it after HBO Max in my streaming power rankings right now. I got good stuff. So Tim Cook, Apple CEO Tim Cook, has has said that their strategy in terms of streaming is very different, just say, than the Netflix strategy, where it's all about quality and not really about quantity. 
And I have yeah. to admit, the few shows that I've watched on Apple TV+, Plus, whether it be For All Mankind or Ted Lasso, and there's many others, I think they're really good. The morning show, um, I, I just think they're really high quality. We just started this show uh, called Physical on Apple TV Plus with Rose Byrne. It's like a 30-minute uh, comedy that I, I recommend. It's pretty funny. Uh, former Smallville actress Allison Mack has been sentenced to three years in federal prison for her role as a leader of the Nexium self-help group uh, slash alleged sex cult. Mack had pleaded guilty to racketeering and conspiracy charges and faced up to 40 years behind bars. <sighs> Prosecutors recommended a uh, much more lenient sentence uh, for her. She was hoping for no jail, so they gave her three years, fairly lenient, um, I guess. But uh, she had cooperated with the government, so she was never going to get that 40 years. Um, but uh, speaking of shows, have you did you ever watch that documentary on HBO about this group, the Nexium documentary? No. Did we discuss it? Uh, I rem it's wild stuff. Uh, it's really wild stuff. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, every NCAA athlete in America will be able to earn money from endorsements and other ventures as of today. As expected, the NCAA Division I board adopted a rule to temporarily suspend the policy against student athletes profiting off their name, image, and likeness. The policy comes as several states have their own policies going into effect today, and the NCAA says it's working with Congress on legislation that would make the guidelines permanent. I mean, talk we, about uh, a movement that just just took really off, kicked right? into high gear within the past year or two years. It's incredible. I think I was talking. I think it was Baker. We were talking about this when this uh, sort of broke last week, um, and I, I, I was mentioning how like my my views on this sort of changed. I used to be sort of like, I, I didn't really like the idea of uh, student athletes getting paid. I've, I've basically changed my mind. I see, you know, I don't see really any reason why they shouldn't be at this point. Um, but the NCAA, for what it's worth, they were basically caught between Congress and the Supreme Court. Um, so they didn't really have much of an option here. So they caved. Um, but, you know, we think about these in terms of like shoe endorsements for big name football and basketball players, because that's sort of, uh, you know, that's how athletes used to get paid um, when we were growing up. Right. But in this day and age, it's really about social media influencing. Uh, so look at Olivia Dunn. She's a gymnast at LSU. She's the only NCAA player with more than a million social media followers. Uh, she could easily make $100,000 in deals just maybe even today, but in the next couple days. Uh, that's according to Darren Ravel of the Action Network. So you're going to see a lot of that, people, you know, uh, athletes going on social media, endorsing this or that product or service, uh, or even making appearances on like Cameo or something like that. Um Pretty interesting. It's going to be fascinating to see it play out and see the endorsements and, and what it actually means in the way in which these college athletes are compensated. Yeah. Uh, finally, an update on a story that we'd been following on the podcast and some good news. Olympic organizers have reversed course and they will now allow breastfeeding athletes to bring their young children along with them to Tokyo. The reversal comes after several Olympians, including Canada's Kim Goucher and U.S. soccer star Alex Morgan, said they felt that they were being forced between being mothers and competing in the games. Nursing mothers and their babies will stay at approved hotels outside of the Olympic Village. Isn't it the best when we do something and then we like call for change and that change happens and then we can be like, oh, the IOC, clearly listening to the podcast. <laughs> There was another example of that. Oh, with the the interpreters in Afghanistan. I was like, yeah, Biden listening to the pod. OK, uh, but no, seriously, just a nice story to end on a sort of otherwise depressing uh, couple weeks of, of news. Right. Look, it's nice to know that like like that just logic and reason and it prevailed yeah. here. Every I once mean, in a while. Every once uh, in a yeah, while. Yeah, I mean, common sense and just decency um, prevailed. So I, I think welcome news. And, and it's time that we start looking out for young moms it's it's such a difficult time in in women's lives i think that, that those early days of parenthood um oh yeah and workplaces and you've got the olympics technically a workplace you know you you've got to just think that they, they need to do everything they can to support them absolutely and dads too not 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 yeah, that it's the same as moms but 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 yeah by the way i totally agree i'm biased as i said that um i thought I should probably include dads. And yes, I, Carlo, I 100% agree. But no, agree. It's, a, it's, a different, it's a different ball game with moms, absolutely, especially nursing moms, yes. Um, okay, that is what you need to know for Thursday, July 1st. All right, guys, see you tomorrow.